Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Stephanie and this is the week 29 whew, weekly wrap up for July the 14th through the 20th as well as a small little break into 24 and 48. said this is the week 29 weekly wrap up for July the 14th through the 20th and this is where I go through all of the books that I read last week and I am also participating currently in 24 and 48 readathon which is a readathon to try and read for 24 hours out of 48 and I'm in the middle of it oh had a timer malfunction last night super late Ugh. so I am taking my catch-up time uh, for my timers to you know get this recorded and start working on it and things like that so I don't lose too many hours um, I am doing extremely well on it I'm super excited about that but let's talk about what I read last week Last week I finished Locked Up Love by Alexa Riley, which is an erotica. I give it four stars. I give it four Steam fans, and I read it as an ebook. I also read this for Romanceopoly for the space of Dungeon, which is to read a book about a bad boy or bad girl or ex-con or a person that was in prison. And in this story, you have Lizzie, who had a pretty awful roommate and set her up with her brother. And then he tried to assault her. In walks Rocco and Rocco pretty much saves her. The two of them feel like they owe each other something, but it's an Alexa Riley book. So the hotness comes from the fact that Rocco saves Lizzie. Lizzie continues to con keep in contact with Ro uh, Rocco while he's in jail for the crimes that he supposedly, you know, did because he saved her. It wasn't self-defense and everything like that from being sexually assaulted. And yeah, so it was good. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, the sexy time didn't come until later on in the book, which I was really surprised about, but I did like the fact that there was some buildup. Um, there are letters to, to each other while he was in jail, and there was a little small twist that I thought was going to come, but didn't come, So, but that was all good as well. The next book that I finished was The Wedding Party by Jasmine Gullery. This is the third book in the Wedding Date series. I place this in contemporary. I give it four stars. I give it three Steam fans. I read it as an arc and it was also released this week. This story follows Theo and Maddie who are best friends with Alexa from the wedding date and oh my goodness I don't know what happened with the proposal but this book even though it frustrated me through most of the story because the story is Theo and Maddie don't like each other but they're friends with Alexa and you know they they have to sort of get along for that because Alexa is now marrying Drew that's not a spoiler alert well sort of is if you haven't read the wedding date but it was super hyped so you should know that Alexa and Drew are getting married the beginning of it was a little um slow for me because it was some flashbacks it was a flashback of um what actually or what sort of occurred in the wedding date and then a small little portion of something that happens in the proposal and then it finally gets into Theo and Maddie's story which they end up hooking up at the engagement party and from there they like to keep things secret or they thought that was the frustrating part to me it was like Y'all really think that your friends don't know you? Come on. Come on. And I think the fact that Theo and Maddie just wanted to sort of keep it a secret. Oh, yeah, we're hooking up, but we don't want anybody to know about it. And they both had their reasons. Their reasons weren't very um, believable, but at the same time, when everything, by the end of it, I was completely satisfied with it. My frustrations were... Uh, I guess you could say soothed by the end of the book and I was here for it. It's almost as if the proposal did not happen and I was I was here for that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry Jasmine that second book was horrible. Um, but these two the wedding date and the wedding party 
I really enjoyed them and I would recommend them. The next book that I finished was Felony Ever After by Helena Hunting, Deborah Anastasia, Tijin, by Keelan, Penelope Ward, Jay Darhauser, Lisa Raven, Liv Morris, Nina Bucci, Bella Aurora, K.A. Robinson, S.M. Lument, and Katherine Stevens. All 13 of those authors wrote one story. All the chapters are them flipping back and forth between each other and building the story about Verde, who is this artist that is in a job with a crappy, creepy, weird boss that continues to get these boxes. Well, the boxes are getting delivered by a bike messenger who ends up taking a taxi with Verity, whose name is Hudson, as we come to find out. He has this, like, bad boy vibe to him. I actually started reading this book to, um, for Romanceopoly, and I am way into the review and I haven't even given you the stars and stuff like that yet um but yes so gave it four stars it was for steam fans I listened to it as an audiobook like I said I was going to read it for Romanceopoly but got that nixed because the story actually doesn't fit the category I was going for but I can place this under my Apolycon 20 and 20 challenge because quite a few of those authors are going to be a at a polycon in 2020. So back to Verity and Hudson. They sort of have misconceptions about each other and then they start to sort of uh, warm up to each other, explore their intrigue about each other, and there's lots of sexual fun. There's a sexual aspect to it. I really enjoyed this book. It was a little slow at parts and a little off jarring, but for the most part, I enjoyed the story. The next book that I finished was Tempt the X by Natasha Matson. I place this in rom-com. I give it four stars. I give it three Steam fans. And I listened to it on the podcast of Read Me Romance. And this story follows Danny and John. And Danny ends up allowing her friends to convince her that she's in college and she needs to sow her wild oats and get rid of her boyfriend that she absolutely loves John and just be done with him. Just do it. Get rid of him. So what does she, Danny do if she takes the advice of her horrible friends? I now understand why so many authors don't write friends into stories because some friends don't give you good advice. They don't. Um, if you're happy with your relationship, why why break it and try and, you know, go out and do something new? Ugh, so annoying. But Danny starts going out to parties and things like that. John is still heartbroken over their breakup and his friends are like, dude, just let it go. It's okay. If she doesn't want you, go get under someone new. But at the same time, he does have a friend that sides with him and is like, okay, I understand your plight. Let's try and get your girl back in these weird, strange ways. Things don't go as completely um, planned on John's part. And same with Danny. She is starting to understand that those friends may not have been had her best intentions uh, in the works, and the two of them, it's sweet, it's cute. There is a little bit of sexy time in it for the Read Me Romance podcast. I'm surprised there wasn't more sexy time, but that is the best thing about the podcast is that you never know what you're really going to get with the short stories that they're uh, providing us, and I liked that there wasn't as much smut as there has been in the past. It was a sweet, fun, sexy uh, story that was, you know, on par. Enjoyed it. The next book that I read was Forever Jack, which is Ever Say Number Two by Natasha Boyd. I place this in Contemporary. I give this book four stars. I give it three Steam fans, and I listen to it on audiobook for the 24 and 48 readathon. This story completes Jack and Carrie Ann's story, and I sort of got what I was craving that I missed in Eversay, and 
I got Jack's side of the story. I got his sort of feelings about all the actions that were going on. This starts a couple months after the revelations from the end of Eversay, so I don't want to say too much about it, so I don't give any way any spoilers if you find that you want to go out and pick up this duet. But as a full story, it does come full circle, and I did enjoy knowing his part as well as Carrie Ann's part. She did not seem as whiny and needy as she did in Eversay, so I appreciated that as well. The next book that I finished was A Misadventures of a Rookie by Tony Elio, and I place this in Contemporary. I give it four stars, I give it four Steam fans, and I listened to it on audiobook for 24 for in 48. Uh, also for my romance genre-a-thon, read-a-thon that I'm doing all year long, this month's theme is sports romance. And in this story, you have Gus, who is a rookie on a farm league hockey team and one of the skate bunnies, I think they're called, or skate girls that go out and pick up um, the hats and things like that off the ice during a game. He finds her very attractive and intriguing. He's not known for wanting a commitment. He's known as Gus the Bus, and he goes through girls like there's no business. He self-proclaims himself as, you know, a one-night stand kind of guy, a one-and-done, you-only-get-me-once type thing. But when he sees Bo and is intrigued by Bo, He's like, I need to know more about her. Well, Bo has some secrets of her own. She is super smart. She had to turn down a scholarship because of some things that happened to her. And she has this bad taste in her mouth about hockey players because the last hockey player um, that she was involved with did her wrong. So to get involved with Gus was like a no-go for her. And I really enjoy the story. I love the banter between them. It was super sexy. The sexual tension and sexual chemistry was just right there from the start and I really really enjoyed it. The last book that I read last week was Rafe a Buff Male Nanny by Rebecca Weatherspoon. I placed this in interracial contemporary. I give it 4.5 stars. I give it four steam fans. I listened to it on audiobook and I listened to it for 24 and 48. Also as an author of color. Oh my goodness. I have been hearing about this book for ugh, so long, and everybody's like, you gotta read it, you gotta read it. I am so in love with Rebecca right now. I'm like, I need to have more. I've been following her on Twitter, and she is slaying the colored hair game at Raw right now, and I'm like, I'm here for it. And then I read this book, and I was like, ha ha, yes, yes. So Rafe is a white guy that's a ginger. I love that aspect of it. But that ginger has a whole bunch of spice and color in his life from his dad um, and his stepmom and everything like that. But he has been a male nanny for a while. Well, Sloan ends up getting into a bit of a pickle when her current nanny, little turd, uh, decides to leave her twin girls alone and she is in need of a new nanny. So someone from her hospital, she's a prodigy um, cardiologist and totally giving me Maggie, Maggie vibes from Grey's Anatomy. That's that that was the person that I pictured for Sloan was Maggie and that that brings up a whole nother story but oh I was here for it I was so here for it I was like yes 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 um for the ginger for Rafe I couldn't put a face on him or celebrity but whoo yes so Sloan calls Rafe Rafe ends up connecting finds attraction to Sloane is like, well, we're gonna have a problem because I think you're sexy. Sloane's like, well, I think you're sexy too. And maybe we can, you know, just keep our sexual chemistry and sexual intrigue down to a minimum um, while you take care of my kids because my kids don't ne necessarily really warm up to anyone and they seem to warm up to you. So they start this business relationship, but end up giving in to their attraction and I was so here for it so 
here for this story. It makes me want more. And it, when I looked back on it, it does say that it might be like a, um, a series book. So I'm going to be checking out some more Rebecca Witherspoon. So just, just here for it. Just here for it. If you want to know what I am currently reading, make sure you are checking out my Instagram stories because I am currently in the middle of 24 and 48 and you'll get a sort of better knowledge of what I'm reading. And also make sure you check out that TBR that I did over here um, so you know what might be coming down the pipeline. Whew. So that is the video. Have you read any of the books that I read last week? Are you participating in 24 and 48? If so, let me know down in the comments. Let's discuss. Let me know what you thought about those books as well. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, there is a feedback form down in the description box so you guys can help me improve my channel. Don't forget to share with your friends my channel as well. Thank you for watching and we will see you guys later.